Well, today's program is entitled Autism and Vaccines, How Bad Science Confuses the Press and Harms the Public. Our speaker is Dr. Steven Salzberg, the director of the Center for Bioinformatics and Computational Biology and the Horvitz Professor of Computer Science at the University of Maryland College Park. He received his BA degree in English and MS and Master of Philosophy degrees in Computer Science from Yale University and his PhD in Computer Science from Harvard University. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Stephen Salzberg. Thank you, Scott. Um, now you know more about me than, than most people who know me. Um, I think I'm going to go without the microphone. Can everybody hear me in the back? You can't? All right, so I'm going to use, in that case, I'll use the microphone. Is that better? Yeah. All right, that means I have to sort of stay here, which is against my usual uh, impulse to walk around. So today I'm going to talk about a topic which is a little bit outside of my usual research area. And I got into this topic uh, for a variety of reasons. One is because I'm, uh, I have an interest in skepticism, but also because I work on, uh, in my work on the influenza virus, I've been involved somewhat in the, in the vaccine uh, for, for that virus. And all of you probably familiar with that, you're supposed to get your shots every year. So, um, but today I'm going to talk about um, autism and vaccines. Let me start with a, with a little bit of, of background. So what is autism? So for those of you who don't know, um, autism is, uh, the main characteristic, characteristics are impairments in behavior. It's really a behavioral syndrome that, that has a range of severity, ranging from very mild autism. Um, there are people um, who walk around with, who are autistic, who walk around and are really pretty normally functioning adults today. Uh, to very severe autism. Um, the people with, with more severe um, versions of autism, uh, some, in some cases, have, have little or no ability to speak. Um, there's a pointer here, yeah. Sorry, let me turn on the pointer. Um, and um, that's about a third to a half of individuals with, with autism. Others who have more mild forms of the disease have social impairments and don't seem to be sensitive to the sort of normal social signals that, that most people are aware of. Um, symptoms of autism usually become noticeable very early in life, uh, between the ages of one and two years. That's, that'll be important, uh, as you'll see in a few minutes. Um, and uh, autism was first called autism. The word autism was, was coined in 1938. So it hasn't really been with us that long, although from all the scientific evidence uh, we can see it's been, a, it's been affecting humans for as long as, as, we, as, as we know. It's not a new disease, but the name is relatively new. Uh, so today, autism comprises a spectrum of disorders ranging from, from mild to, to very severe. So the other topic um, today, and I'll tell you how they, how they converge, is the MMR vaccine. So the MMR vaccine, is, that stands for measles, mumps, and rubella. Um, rubella is also called German measles. Um, if, you're, if you're a little bit older, you might have had some of these. I actually had German measles when I was a kid. Um, before the, the rubella vaccine was available. Um, and they're, they're, it's given today around the age of one year as a single vaccine. Um, and uh, it's been a tremendous, it's done tr a tremendous good for public health. Uh, it's been estimated that uh, the first 20 years of licensed measles vaccination in the U.S. prevented uh, roughly 52 million cases of the disease, uh, set over 17,000 cases of mental retardation, and, and over 5,000 deaths. And that's just to point out that not only do, do, does the vaccine prevent disease, but in some cases, these diseases are, in fact, very serious. So the vaccine has been a very good thing for public health, as have, have, as have other vaccines. So the, the top, my topic for today and the controversy that I want to discuss is, um, uh, involves both these topics, autism and the MMR vaccine. So, um, so the controversy started in 1998 with an article in, in this journal here, The Lancet. Um, the Lancet, if you work in biomedical research as I do, you'll know The Lancet is one of the world's top uh, medical journals. Uh, articles that appear there are very highly regarded. It's very hard to get papers published in The Lancet because it publishes only the very best uh, biomedical articles for the most part. Um, its first issue was 1823. There's a snapshot of it. Um, so it's been around for a very long time and it's very highly regarded. So, so here's a paper that started the controversy. Um, this is from February 1998. It was by Andrew Wakefield and 12 other authors. And the title, I don't expect you to, to be able to understand that title because I can't understand that title. So a very technical sounding title. Um, but what the paper was about was about a study of just 12 children, 12 children ranging in, uh, ranging in age from ages 3 to 10. And it, what, these are the, this is a summary of the paper, and I've, I've sort of uh, in slightly larger type here, you can see that one of their findings was that 
onset of behavioral sy symptoms was associated by the parents with measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine in eight of the 12 children. Now, these behavioral symptoms, if you read the paper, um, are autism. So what was striking was that the autism in eight of these 12 children uh, appeared, to, to, appeared to the parents anyway within a couple of weeks of the vaccine, in most cases within one week. So it was really quite striking if you read the paper uh, that eight out of 12 times that the children get autistic, become autistic very soon after getting the MMR vaccine. So this is, this is a, these are quotes from the paper. Um, so what they said in the paper was that the combined measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine was implicated, and that is implicated in autism. Um, they also emphasized in the paper the following. We did not prove an association between measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine and the syndrome indicated. So this is the kind of scientific qualification you expect to see in, in, in many scientific papers, that there's a, there's a correlation that we didn't prove that one was causing the other. But the authors um, made a much bigger deal of this than the careful language from the paper. So in particular, they held a press conference, which they, they publicized as much as they could. Uh, this is Andrew Wakefield, who's the lead author. And they held a press conference where they discussed the link between the vaccine and autism. Here's a quote from the press release. Um, the study, this is a quote from Wakefield in their press release. The study has identified a possible link between gut disorders in children and autism. That's a separate issue, the gut disorders. In the majority of cases, the onset of symptoms occurred soon after the MMR vaccination. So this finding and the press, the press furor that surrounded it caused tremendous concern among parents who hear, they're not going to go and read the article, they hear the, they hear the press conference, um, and they hear that, oh, these children are, getting, uh, are becoming autistic after getting the vaccine. And, and as a parent, who's, if, you're not, uh, if you're not going to be reading the scientific literature, which most parents don't, uh, except for me um, <laughs> and a few others, um, you hear there's a possible link, and you, you start to second guess whether you should let your child have this, have this shot, because you think, well, measles, they could get measles, that's not so bad, you get over measles, but autism, that's a lifelong disease. We don't have any, any treatment or cure for it. So in the scientific community, there was also concern because this link was, was, was uh, pointed out. Uh, so studies were done right away, uh, and there have been more since, which I'll point out a little later, um, that showed that, in fact, uh, the findings didn't hold up. So here's a study that appeared in The Lancet just one year later, um, and the title of the study pretty much tells you the result. Uh, autism measles, and measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine, no epidemiologic uh, evidence for causal association. Here's a quote from that study, which basically says the same thing. There was no temporal asso uh, association between onset of autism within one or two years after vaccination. In other words, they didn't associate getting symptoms of autism with the time at which they got the vaccine. And here's another study, also from The Lancet, negative association between MMR and autism. So these two studies were a year later, 1999. But this, as is often the case, these studies that say, well, it doesn't really look like there's a, there's a link, those did not get publicity. And Wakefield and others were continuing to publicize their concerns and their findings.